Acts chapter number 4, verse number 31, is where we'll start our reading tonight. The Bible says, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. And can I say that if you study not only the book of Acts, but you study uh, the apostles, you study John in 1 John chapter 2, where he talks about you have an unction with the Holy One, and, and you study these men of God, it was not an odd thing for the men of God to preach with boldness. But today it is. Amen. There are a lot of people who say, Preacher, I can't believe you're that bold in the pulpit. I can't believe that every preacher's not that bold in the pulpit. Again, that's not what I'm preaching on, but I thought I'd give that to you, all right? Look at verse number 32. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. Lord, I'm thankful come morning we're crossing over. Lord, we'll be with you forevermore. But Lord, I'm glad until that day you've given us a fold and there's comfort and closeness. We don't have to wander from you. We can just hang out with you. And Lord, we bless you and thank you for the church. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you, Lord, for uh, folks that long before we were on the scene earnestly contended for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And they've preached the gospel throughout the years. And Lord, what a blessing that we can come tonight and we still have the truth uh, because it's been handed down from generation to generation. Uh, Lord, help us to be faithful. Uh, Lord, that if uh, you call us off the scene uh, and there's another generation, we too will hand it down just like you wrote it down. Uh, now, Father, I pray you'd bless, uh, you'd speak to hearts, uh, You'd encourage uh, your children. You'd edify them. You'd strengthen them. Uh, God, I pray that we would leave out uh, much different than we came in. Uh, I certainly pray if there's any amongst us uh, that are strangers to the grace of God, uh, there'd be great grace in this place tonight. Uh, and Lord, uh, they'd fall under Holy Ghost conviction and get born again. Uh, Father, I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel. Uh, Father, I pray that Jesus would be highly magnified tonight. God, I pray that you'd receive all honor and all glory. Father, we bless you for it. Now, help us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Uh, as a way of introduction, I want to look at this text, uh, and then I want to bring you the thought God gave me in my office this week. Uh, I want you to notice, first of all, uh, and uh, it ought to be mentioned first, uh, because nothing else is going to transpire without this. Uh, I want you to notice the prayer. Uh, look again in verse number 31. Uh, and when they had prayed. Uh, can I say that the events that followed, uh, Brother Tommy would not have followed had they not prayed uh, and called on the Lord. Uh, can I say uh, it has never changed. Uh, uh, God has always heard and answered the prayers of his people uh, but the power of God always uh, uh, has a prelude, precursor to it, uh, and it is prayer. Uh, we find that they prayed, uh, somebody touched heaven, uh, somebody grabbed a hold of the horns of the altar, uh, somebody touched the heart of God, uh, and God moved towards them. Uh, can I say he's the same God today uh, as he was then, uh, and God's a listening, uh, uh, longing for somebody uh, to want him as much as he wants us uh, to desire him. We see prayer. Uh, notice, if you will, the presence of God. Uh, look in verse 31 again. Uh, 
And when they prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. Uh, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Uh, I like it when God shows up. Uh, can I say he won't show up uh, unless somebody's invited him, uh, somebody's talked to him, uh, somebody's longing for him. Uh, but when he shows up, he makes a difference. Uh, sometimes he shows up and he thunders like he did in this text. Uh, sometimes he shows up uh, and puts a holy hush on the place. Uh, sometimes he shows up in singing. Uh, sometimes he shows up in testimonies. Uh, sometimes he shows up in the preaching. Uh, sometimes he shows up in the parking lot. Uh, I don't care what it takes to get him here. Uh, I just want God to show up. Uh, and when he shows up uh, everything that we're struggling with seems so minor when God's on the scene uh, we see prayer we see the presence of God uh, now notice the if you will the parallel uh, look in verse number 32 and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. Notice that they're all equal. They're one. There's no big eyes and little U's. There's no, well, there's the Apostle Peter, there's the Apostle John, there's the Apostle James, John and James, the son of thunder. Uh, no, the Bible said that they were all one. Uh, they had uh, 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 the same spirit. Uh, they had the same goals. Uh, they had the same intentions. Uh, and this crowd even sold everything that they had and put it all together. Uh, so they had all things common. Uh, 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 that means if somebody was hungry, uh, they had something to eat. Uh, that means if somebody had a need uh, uh, because their goat got killed, uh, they'd get them another goat. Uh, 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 no matter what the need was, uh, it was all taken care of. Uh, now I understand that if we called for that today, the church would empty out real quick. Mm -hmm. Huh? Because, mm. see, we, we got too much entitlement. Mm. God's been so good to us, we don't want to give it up. Mm. You know, I wonder <laughs> what we'd look like if I... I really felt led of God say, okay, everybody sell everything you got, bring it in the kitty, we're going to live off of it. That wouldn't bother any of you. You don't want to have a job. Hmm? Well, some that's worked for a long time, and that's gathered up a lot, might be real hesitant putting it in a kitty and taking care of some that don't work for anything. But see, this crowd... They got in the presence of God. Nothing else mattered. Now, I understand we're in a different timetable. I understand most of these people didn't have a time clock that they hit. They didn't go to work for a factory. They didn't go to work for a firm. They didn't go to work uh, 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 like we do today. Uh, can I say they didn't have the homes that we have today. They didn't have the mortgages. They didn't have uh, 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 the automobiles because they didn't have automobiles. They didn't have all the things. Uh, most of them, uh, all they did was stay at home and work around the home and do some things, maybe grow some crops or do a trade uh, uh, to sell some things that they could just survive with. Uh, uh, they was used to having not much of anything as, an, uh, as a whole. Uh, 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 and I understand that uh, if we all had to come together like this, uh, there probably wouldn't have been a church uh, after about the year 1000. Mm. Um, but isn't it amazing? Even though God doesn't require us to sell everything we have and bring it, He still requires us to have the same mind, the same goal, and the same spirit, because we all have the same book, the same doctrine, and the same Lord. Huh? Mm -hmm. God doesn't honor when there's no unity. No unity, no unction. Can I say, Brother Ed, I've heard people say, well, you can't be of the same mind if you don't believe everything exactly the same. 
Well, brother, you've been saved a long time. Now, we've got some folks that haven't been saved that long. How can they believe everything you believe? Because God showed you things that they hadn't got to that course yet. It's not about believing everything exactly the same. It's about believing Him and putting Him first and seeking Him and allowing His Spirit to show you as you're growing. Uh, 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 but it's always about Him. Mm, where we get in trouble is where we have our own personal agendas. Let me say this. God has no favorites, but He treats everybody like they're His favorite. We ought to not have no favorites, but we ought to treat everybody like they're our favorite. Because that's the way Jesus does. Uh, we see that they had all things in common. I'm still not preaching. I'm not getting there. Notice, if you will, the power, verse 33. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them. We notice they had power. There's an indictment of our day and age because where's the power? Can I say most churches are just trying to hold on to what they got? Where's the power of God? Can I say they had great power because they had great prayer. If we talk to God as much as we talk to others or talk about others, we'd have some power too. Can I say most of our problems would be fixed if we just had the power of God in our life? Amen. The things we fret about, we wouldn't fret about if we had the power of God. And then notice the provisions. We kind of touched on it. Verse 34, Neither was there any lacking among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. So we see that provision was made for everybody. I'm interested in verse 33 where it says, And with great power. With God's help, I want to preach on great power. There's one thing I don't see much in my travels and see and hear about is the power of God. Great power. I don't hear about it. I don't hear about that. I hear about great talent. I hear about great works. I hear about great ministries. I hear about a, a great falling away. But I don't hear much about great power. How many of you believe Jesus is the same yesterday and for today and forevermore? Well, if he's the same, then how come we don't have the power? So I'm going to preach on great power tonight. And this will never go down as my most popular message, but it should be one of the most needful messages. Can I say... Great power is a result, first of all, of accountability. Look with me back earlier in the chapter, verse number 1. The Bible says, And as they spake unto the people, the priest and captain of the temple, the Sadducees, came upon them, being grieved, here's why, that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Now look down in verse number 10. Now they're in jail for preaching. They bring them out and ask them, what, what authority are you preaching? Look what Peter says. Uh, Be it known unto you uh, all uh, and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, uh, whom God raised from the dead, uh, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole, uh, this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, uh, which is become uh, the head of the corner. Uh, neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name given under heaven where, uh, uh, among men whereby we must be saved. Uh, uh, can I say that long before uh, uh, they prayed, long before great power, uh, there was accountability. Uh, you'll never have great power from on high uh, unless you're accountable. Uh, 
Uh, here is uh, 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 Peter and James and John doing what Jesus told them to do. Uh, before Jesus ascended to go back up into heaven, uh, he told them uh, that the Holy Ghost was going to come upon them uh, and they should be witnesses unto him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. Uh, he gave the same commission to the church today. Uh, go ye to all the world and preach the gospel. Uh, hey, uh, when you're sharing the gospel, uh, that's when power comes. Uh, and can I say, uh, they were accountable to do what God said, uh, and great power fell on them uh, when uh, the church of the living God uh, is accountable to God uh, for what God's told them to do. Uh, God will show up in great power, uh, but when the church sits down uh, and doesn't do what God told them to do, uh, when the church gets relaxed, uh, when the church gets complacent, uh, when the church starts going through the motions, uh, hey, the power of God is nowhere to be found, my dear friends. Uh, great power comes through accountability. Can I say great power is a result of adversity? Throughout the Bible and throughout the history of the church, the church, when it was at its most fervency, was going through adversity. Look, if you will, in verse 3. And they laid hands on them and put them in the hold until the next day, for it was now eventide. They went to jail for preaching the truth. Can I say, throughout the book of Acts, you'll find that they're beaten. Mm, 39 stripes. They're in prison. They're locked up. They're told never to preach in the name of Jesus anymore. Uh, can I say great power comes uh, in adversity. It's a result of adversity. And can I say tonight, uh, what's wrong with our day and age? Uh, we've had it too good for too long. Uh, uh, we've not had to struggle at all. Uh, Nobody had any problem uh, pulling up the drive and pulling into the church and walking in uh, and sit down. Uh, and when it's over, you get up and you go back to the house uh, with no fear for your life because you came to church. Uh, with no fear uh, uh, for the, uh, or shame that somebody's going to uh, uh, stop you on the way to work tomorrow and say, do you go to church? Yeah, we're throwing you in jail. Uh, can I say we've had no adversity? and that's why we have no power we just had it too good matter of fact if somebody looks at us cross-eyed we think we've suffered for Jesus uh, if somebody tells us they don't want anything to do with church boy we get our feelings hurt and we think we've really suffered uh, read the book of Acts and read through Hebrews you'll find people that suffered Read the book, uh, The Trail of Blood. You'll find people that suffered. Can I say, great power comes as a result of adversity. Whenever any of God's youngins get picked on, God shows up. Amen. Now listen, I'm not much. And all three of mine are grown. But I want to tell you something. You start picking on my youngins, you're going to see a side of me you've never seen. Listen, you can pick on me all day long. I belong to God. He'll take care of that. But well, them youngins belong to me. That little brunette right there belongs to me. You start picking on them, you're going to see a side of me. Now, I'm not much. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not much. But I got two friends I carry with me that can, can help me. Uh, you say, mercy and grace? Well, hopefully. But Smith and Wesson will show up if they don't. What I'm trying to say is, you don't pick on somebody's children if he's any man at all. He's going to come to their defense. Uh, uh, Brother Bob, I don't, I don't imagine you would have took kindly somebody picking on Miss Shannon. Now, she'd take care of herself now, but when she's little, uh, you'd show them a little Texas uh, roadhouse, wouldn't you, huh? But I, I want to tell you something. You don't pick on God's youngins and God not show up and do something about it. Now, God may allow his youngins to go to jail. 
He may allow his youngins to suffer persecution. And he only do that for his glory. Uh, but listen, friend, they're not getting away with it. Uh, and as a result, God will do something great when his youngins Amen. face adversity. Can I say great power is a result of accountability. It's a result of adversity. It's a result of abandonment. Can I say that we don't have great power in this day and age because God's people have learned to live without God? You're hungry, you don't call on God to send in groceries. You just go to Kroger's. And if you don't got the money, you just put plastic out there. Pay for them later. Huh? We've learned to depend on everything that this world has to offer, and we don't depend on God. Now, I remember coming up. I remember. I remember your mama getting mad because my grandparents gave away all the food they had to a needy family in the church. They came by the house and said, Preacher, you got any food? My baby's going to starve. I and so my grandma and grandpa gave them what they had. And your mama got mad. The next day, there's a knock at the door. The fellow said, Preacher, I, I know you all probably don't need it, but the Lord laid it on my heart to do this for you. And he had a pickup truck, and the whole pickup truck bed was full of food. Hmm. See, we don't live that way anymore. No. Somebody comes knocking on our door for food. We'll just give them some money and say, go on and get your own. We don't do without. But we don't depend on God. We don't pray to... Go read George Mueller's autobiography and see how George Mueller uh, uh, took care of that uh, uh, orphanage he had for all those years. I and mean, He prayed it in. Hmm? Amen. Uh, we don't live that way anymore. We're not abandoned to God. We don't have to depend on God in order to eat and survive in this world. We've learned the world's ways. And unfortunately, we've allowed it to come into the church. Does the church operate by faith? Hmm? Can I say most of the time we don't? And when there's been times at our church that I've stood up and said, I don't know how it's going to be there, but I'm just saying we've got to do this. Thanks be unto God. Folks have said, okay, let's do it, preacher. But they've questioned in the shadows, Brother Randy, well, where's it going to come from? I've had them even ask me, well, preacher, how, how are we going to afford that? We're not. God's the one who said to do it, so he'll take care of it. But we don't like living that way. But can I say, to have great power, that's the only way to live. Let me prove it to you. Let me show you how abandoned they were to God. Look with me in verse 23. Now, I mentioned several times that they prayed. Now, I'm going to read you their prayer. This sounds like people who are depending on God. In verse 23, the Bible says, And being let go, they let him go. They went to their own company and reported to all the chief priests and, uh, and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in, th that, that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord uh, and against his Christ. Uh, for of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou anointed, both Herod uh, and Pontius Pilate, uh, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. Uh, for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel de de determined before to be done. Uh, and now, Lord, behold their threatenings, uh, and grant unto thy servants... Uh, that with all boldness they may speak the, thy word uh, by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done uh, by the name of thy holy 
child Jesus. Uh, and it says, and when they prayed, uh, did you hear what was saying? They knew everything was by the counsel of God. Uh, and they were dependent on God. Uh, and they said, God, if it's going to get done, it's because you're going to do it. Uh, and you've given your men boldness. Uh, and they're uh, abandoning themselves to the very will of God. Uh, and God showed up with great power in shaking the building they were in. Uh, when you and I get to where we totally depend on God, uh, put God first, uh, I trust God, need God, uh, look out, there be great power that comes along. Can I say great power is a result of accountability, adversity, and abandonment. But can I say it results in great grace. Look again in verse number 33. It's a result of accountability, adversity, and abandonment, but it results in great grace. When great power shows up, there'll be great grace. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. When there's great power, God gives great grace for you to handle anything comes your way, but also great grace where folks start getting saved. Hmm? Can I say nobody gets saved outside the grace of God? And we see a little bit of that every now and then. Little grace. I'd like to see a whole lot of God. I'd like to see great grace. I don't know what great grace is. I'd like to see it. But it follows great power. Great power is a result of accountability, adversity, and abandonment. But it results in great grace. It also results in this. And here's where everybody checks out, Miss Kathy. It results in great giving. Mm -mm. Look again at verse 34. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold, and they laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, uh, who by the apostles was surnamed by Barnabas, which is in being interpreted, the son of consolation, a Levite, uh, and of the country of Cyprus, uh, having land, sold it, uh, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Can I say, when there's great power, there's great grace, and then there's great giving. Hmm. When God shows up, guess what happens? He also gets people's pocketbook. Hmm. People give when God shows up. Hmm. Can I say, we don't like that word, give. That's a four-letter word in a Baptist church. Hmm. Can I say, if people weren't faithful to give, the lights wouldn't be on tonight. The air conditioning wouldn't be running tonight building wouldn't look nice tonight uh, people weren't faithful to give we'd still be over there and, and it's been torn down a long time ago we'd be over there in that TV repair shop hmm? can I say giving has always been a result of when people's hearts right with the Lord hmm? I know giving's not popular and there are people that don't believe tithing is scriptural if I had a dollar, Brother Peter, everybody told me, well, tithing is Old Testament. Not in the New Testament. Well, hogwash it is. But people that say that, uh, Brother Donald, are saying that because they don't tithe. Right. Hmm? Uh, let me just give it to you. You see this little piece of paper? It's tattered and torn. That has been in my Bible for 35 years. Can I say, I started using it 35 years ago. I still am going to use it again tonight. You know why? Because it's true. Hmm? The Bible hadn't changed, and I'm not going to change. Let me help you with something. The Word of God's clear from Genesis to Revelation on giving. Abraham started it in Genesis 14, 20. By the way, it wasn't in the law then because there wasn't no law. When Abraham met Melchizedek, he gave tithes of everything he had. Hmm? Jacob continued it in Genesis 28-22. Then Moses incorporated it in the law in Leviticus 27-30. Can I say that Nehemiah restored it in Nehemiah 13-11-12. Uh, Malachi commanded it in Malachi 3-8-10. Uh, Jesus commended it in Matthew 23-23. Uh, 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 can I say that God ordained it in 1 Corinthians 9-13. Uh, and Paul explained it in 1 Corinthians 16-2. Uh, and if he's the writer of Hebrews, in Hebrews 7-8. and 8. You find it throughout the Bible. 
when God shows up, people give. Hmm? Why? Because he overjoys them. Hmm? Uh, you show me a church that stingy, I'll show you a church that doesn't have the power of God. Matter of fact, my mind is thinking about a church right now that is down to about 40 people. It used to be a powerhouse church. It's down to about 40 people, and they're resting their laurels on the fact they got $300,000 in the bank. Hmm? And you and I both know that if the Lord Jesus comes, that $300,000 is going to the Antichrist. Hmm? But there are people who don't believe and practice tithing because they don't believe the Bible. And can I say this? They don't have faith. Well, Brother Rod, I made them mad. Might as well make them good and mad. If you're just tithing, you're still not right with God. Because it tells us to give a tithe and an offering. Hmm? And if you want the real blessings of God when you all get jobs, learn to tithe, give an offering, and give a mission offering. There's not one you can't outgive God, but the more you give God, the more blessed you'll be. He might not uh, bless you to drive a, a fancy car, but He'll bless you with peace and joy and love uh, and strength, uh, and He'll bless you with His touch in your life, and that's worth more than money can buy. Uh, and I can say that when you practice it, things that you have around the house seem to last longer. Your clothes don't wear out. I mean, he kept the Jews' clothes from wearing out for 40 years. He knows how to take care of it. Uh, but it's a result of great power. When you have the power of God in your life, you'll have faith, you'll believe it. It's always a faith, a faith issue. Miss Marcy... It's all whether or not we'll put faith in what God said. Because he said, prove me now if I'll not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing you cannot contain. He said in Luke, in Luke that it pressed down, shaking and bubbling over, men give into your bosom. You can't outdo God. Girls, when you start working, start giving. And God will bless. Hmm? Brother Charlie Miller, what a blessing he was. Love Brother Charlie. Brother Charlie, after he retired, he was just as faithful as when he worked. Uh, but every time that something came up, up and they, they had some unexpected expense and they didn't know how they was going to pay for it, uh, he'd just tell Miss Judy, just add more money on our offerings. Uh, just give more money to God. Uh, 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 and it's, uh, I was amazed at how much God did in Brother Charlie's life. Uh, 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 now, Brother Charlie wasn't perfect. He didn't walk on water. Uh, but he did have that gift thing down uh, and what a blessing I've told this story I'm going to tell it again because it's on my mind uh, 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 listen I didn't even have Charlie on my mind when I walked in here tonight uh, 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 but listen uh, 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 they needed new windows in their house they did they needed new windows in their house but they couldn't afford windows for their house uh, and uh, he told Miss Judy just start giving more money to the Lord uh, and it wasn't long uh, they got a letter a registered letter from Delta Airlines uh, and Delta Airlines said that uh, they they flew right over Brother Charlie's house and they knew there was a noise issue uh, and if uh, Brother Charlie and Miss Judy wouldn't sue Delta Airlines uh, they'd put new windows in their house. Uh, not only that they'd insulate their house and they'd seal their house uh, and they'd put an air system in their house that would filter out better air. Uh, I mean big money Delta Airlines put into Brother Charlie's house uh, all because he believed God was faithful. Uh, hey David said he'd never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. Uh, you can't outdo God. You can't outgive God. Uh, and when His power shows up, you want to give to God. Huh? Seen it too many times. I got a blessing this past year. I didn't know this. Miss Annette doesn't know how much money we make. So she always writes out a check. So she just always writes out and she well, I better put more and put more. When, we, when I was doing the taxes this year, she ended up giving about 20% last year. And can I say, we didn't miss anything. God was good to us. God's blessed us. Everything we've ever desired, we have. Uh, my kids get mad at me all the time. They want to buy me something for my birthday or buy me something for Christmas, but I've already bought it because if, you know, if I want it, I just go get it. Uh, why? Because God's been good to me. Uh, I'm just telling you, you can't outdo God. Uh, 
And when there comes great power, there'll be great giving. Uh, well, that went over like a lead balloon. Can I say, though, it results in great grace. It results in great giving. I mean, people selling houses and lands and giving it to the Lord. But can I say this tonight? When great power shows up, it results in a gap. The same kind of gap I'm feeling right about now. You say, what are you talking about? I'm glad you asked. Look at chapter number 5. Look at verse number 1. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of it, to, to, of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost uh, and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not th uh, thine own? Uh, and after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Uh, why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart uh, that thou, uh, uh, thou hast not uh, lied unto men but unto God? You see, when great power shows up, listen to me now, the power of God will separate the contenders from the pretenders. See, they only, they only wanted to give part. They wanted to keep part. But they weren't all in. And when the power of God shows up, it always separates some who's not all in. Now, can I say, I didn't say, Miss Billy, they're not saved. I'm just saying they're not all in. Huh? What do you mean, Brother Doug? What I mean is they just don't truly believe all the Bible. They pick and choose what they want to believe. Amen. And they pick and choose what they're going to do. Huh? Listen. The Bible tells us not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together so much more as you see the day approaching. What day? It's coming. Hi, baby. Huh? So, what are you talking about, preacher? How come folks have no problem coming to church on Sunday morning? But they don't come back Sunday night and Wednesday night. They just don't see the need. Because they don't really believe the Bible. They believe it to a point. But they themselves choose what they're going to practice and what they're really going to believe. When the power of God shows up, it, it, it reveals all that. Those who are all in and those who aren't. Hmm? Mm, say, preacher, I, I, I don't like this kind of preaching. Well, take it up with the Bible. I'm showing you right here in the Bible. What happened when great power shows up? Am I making this up? Did great power show up? Did great grace show up? Did they give a lot when, when the power showed up? And did this joker not give all? Was there not a gap here? You got uh, uh, this whole crowd that's of the same mind, the same soul. They're selling everything they got. But you got one. Thinks he knows better. Thinks he knows more. Thinks he's the authority. Hmm? And can I say, Peter said, you didn't lie to men. You lied to God. And can I say, who haven't I picked on? Brother Charlie? When people choose not to be faithful, even though we miss them, and even though it might be kind of a hindrance to the service, it's not against us. It's against him. I used to beat myself up a lot when you preach and you preach and folks, Brother Clint, don't get it and they actually reject it and they go on down the road somewhere. I used to, well, what could I have done better? What could I? And Brother Aaron, God just showed me one time, it has nothing to do with you. There are problems with me. That's what the Lord showed me. He said, I just told you to preach it. You let me handle the rest of it. That was a great day in my life. I got some victory that day. Just preach it. That's all God called me to do. He never called me to be popular, and I'm not real popular right now, but that's okay. I'm still going to preach it. And I'm not making it up. I'm preaching the Bible to you. 
We are a Bible-believing church, aren't we? All right, I'm, still, I'm just make sure I'm still in the right place, all right? Can I say there's not only, it not only results in great grace and great giving and a great gap, or a gap, but it does bring great genuflection. That's a big fancy word. I had to look that up. But I needed a G right here. What are you talking about, preacher? Look at verse 11. We've seen great power brings great grace. Here's what else it does. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. See, it cost Ananias his life. It cost his wife his, her life because they, they lied to God. And can I say, those that uh, 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 continually don't do the will of God, they are dying spiritually and drying up on the vine right in as they're living their lives. Uh, but here's the thing. When others seen how serious God was about this, it brought great fear. That's what that word genuflection means. It means great reverence. They didn't reverence Peter, James, and John and the other apostles. They reverenced God. It brought great regard for the things of God. They appreciated the church even more. When the great power of God falls, people fall in love with the church more. Can I say this? It also brings great respect. They respected one another, and they respected the things of God. Hmm? Now listen, Brother Bob asked me to announce this earlier, and I forgot, but it fits right here, Brother Bob. If you truly respect God, the people of God, and the things of God, it'll show up in your actions. Now one of Brother Bob's biggest pet peeves and just walking into church tonight, he found three of them. Is people spitting gum on the parking lot. Now, we just had this parking lot redone. There shouldn't be any gum on the parking lot. Amen. But just from where he parked to come in, he found three things, which means Brother Bob got down and got those, that gum up. Because here's the thing. There's nothing worse than stepping on somebody's nasty gum. And can I say this? As hot as it is on that blacktop, it's going to be mushy. Huh? I told Brother Bob, we's, we went to see my nephew play football last week, and my mother-in-law stepped on some gum. My wife was having to get it off her shoe up there in the stands. It was nasty. Can I say, there's, that's, that's nasty. Huh? And Brother Bob said, and he's so right, if you get it on your shoes, you're going to bring it in here on the carpet. Hmm? Now, this carpet's not going to last forever. It's 19 years old. It's doing real good. But you start getting gum all over it, we're going to have to cut it out. It's going to be nasty. It's going to look terrible. It all comes down to respect. So I didn't think anything. I just spit it out. Yeah, because you don't respect the house of God. This is, this is God's place. This, is, this should be holy ground. Uh, it's amazing some of the things people talk about while they're on church grounds. Mm, this is holy ground. But when the power of God falls, you respect the things of God a whole lot more. Amen. Mm, I should never have to mention that. Right. Huh? Listen, keep your gum in your mouth, throw it in a garbage can when you're done with it, or swallow it. I don't care. Don't put it on the parking lot or in the carpet. Huh? Say, so swallowing gum's nasty, so stepping on it. Hmm? But there's great respect for the things of God. Huh? I appreciate, and I watch it all the time, where somebody will see a piece of paper on the floor and they'll bend down and pick it up. Or they'll see something that's just not right and they'll fix it. And they'll take care of it because they take pride in the church. Thank God for that. I also see some folks are nasty. Uh, why? Because they don't respect the things of God. Uh, they just throw their Bible around. You got to appreciate your Bible. There are people in parts of the world that love to have that Bible. They don't pay attention when somebody's singing. I guess I'm getting old. It gets on my nerves when somebody's talking while somebody's up singing. Hey, this 
This isn't conversation time. This is worship time. And somebody's singing about Jesus. Huh? Shouldn't be talking. Huh? Should respect the things of God. And here, let me help you something. You shouldn't be looking around, seeing what somebody's doing or what somebody's wearing or what somebody... Yeah, who cares? You should have your mind on Jesus. I'm just telling you, we need the power of God is what I'm telling you. Uh, can I say it also results in growth, great growth. You want to see people saved? You want to see the church grow? We need to get the power of God on the place. Look at chapter 5, verse 14. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both men and women. Say, so how'd they get all them people saved? They had the power of God. Can I say the best soul winning program in the world is get the power of God. He gets in the house, guess what? People come far and wide because they're desiring Him. Now I've mentioned great power is a result of some things. I've mentioned it results in great things. But I'd be a sorry preacher and everything I said would be amiss if I didn't tell you where it results from. How do we get great power? Well, verse 29 makes it real clear. We ask for it. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak the word. We've got to ask for the power of God. John 16, 24, Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. James 4, 2, Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain, ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Somebody please start asking God for the power of God. Mm. Results from asking for it. It also results from aligning ourselves to receive it. Mm. 1 John three twenty two. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. You'll never have great power till you start keeping the things of God and do those things that please God. When we're doing what pleases God and we're living the way God wants us to do and then we ask Him for power, He'll send it. Hmm? Listen. Ella Rose can't even talk, but she's already getting everything she asked for. Hmm? Huh? Whether she needs it or not. Why? Because she's mine. That's why. Huh? She just got flash them baby blues, Clint. She's got it. Mm. Huh? Every day a package comes to my house for Ella Rose. Huh? You say, why? Preacher, you spoil them. Yeah. I spoiled my three. Best I could, but I can spoil her better. That's right. She's telling me right now what she wants. What can I say? If Ella Rose never wanted to come around me and if she didn't light up when she seen me and if she, you know, just didn't like her grandpa, she wouldn't get what she gets, but she loves her grandpa. Huh? When we love God right, He answers what we ask for. And we love Him right when we do John 15, 3, If you love me, keep my commandments. Hmm? John 15 10 it says that if you keep my commandments you shall abide in my love even as I've kept my father's commandments and abide in his love A.W. Tozer said this the power of God is one with God's will and works only as he wills that it should you'll never have his power without being in his will friends we've got to align ourselves we've got to ask for it but then we've got to have an appetite for it. Luke 6, 21. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Now let me ask you a question. Did you come in tonight hungering for the power of God? I say most people come out of obligation. 
A lot of people will come because they want to come to church. It's part of their life. They come. They want to be involved. They want to hear the singing. They want to hear the preaching. But very few come hungry for the power of God. We come hungry for a good service. We want to hear good preaching, good singing. We want to have good fellowship. But we don't come hungry for the power of God. The preacher, how could you say that? Brother Phil, you say, how can you say that, preacher? Because we don't have the power of God. If we hungered for it, we'd be filled. Hmm? We hunger for a lot of things. The power of God is way down on the list. Said all that, say this tonight. If we're going to truly impact this world, Miss Kinsey, I had no idea what you was going to testify. Either that philosophy class is going to impact you or you're going to impact them. And the only way you'll ever impact them is if you've got the power of God in your life. You can tell them you're a Christian. Most of Grant County is going to tell somebody they're a Christian. Very few have the power of God. What separates the men from the boys, so to speak, is the power of God. And the only way our church will impact this world is if we have the power of God. We've already got the right doctrine. we already got enough gospel tracts. we already got enough ministries. What we lack is the power of God. I challenge you. Seek the Lord. Seek His presence in your life. Get to the place where you align yourself with Him and start asking for the power of God. You want to see the difference? Ask for the power of God. You might start tonight by asking Him to get you ready where you can ask for the power of God. I'm done. Brother Clint, get a song of invitation while they're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Lord, I love the Bible. Lord, what we need is the power of God. But unfortunately, Lord, what we ask for are trivial things. God, help us to have the power of God that we may speak with boldness, that we may turn the tide of the devil and all of hell, that God, folks would come to know you, and in so doing, they'd quit cursing your name, but they'd start blessing your name. God, I pray you'd give us unity. I pray you'd give us a hunger. I pray for the power of God. May this place be filled with the power of God on the Lord's day in so much that even the critters in the woods know that God's in His house. May it shake the foundations of this community. God, may sinners call on Jesus to be saved. God, may prodigals get right with God. God, may reprobates flee to another town. God, I pray that Lord, this community would be known as a godly community. I pray that stores would quit selling alcohol and things that, Lord, addict and control people because people are being controlled by God. I pray false churches would close down. I pray that multitudes would come to see Jesus high and lifted up. God, touch each and every one of your people that are here tonight. God, fill their heart with grace and the goodness of God. God, help them to desire you and your power. God, give us the power of God in our life. That God, you'd be glorified and many would come to you. 
bless now this invitation. Give us a hunger for your presence. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.